Welcome to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church as we celebrate divine worship on this third Sunday of Advent. We are so pleased that you have joined us and we look forward to a wonderful experience with you sharing in our online campus. Now, if this is your first time sharing with us, we invite you to put your name and your telephone number in the chat line that we may be able to remain in contact with you and share with you the wonderful blessings of the Lord that's occurring at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church of Garland, Texas. Now let us begin divine worship of the Lord our God. This is our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, all. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sings praises. Amen. Hey, let us rejoice and be glad in him. I don't know about you, but I came to give God some praise on this Sunday morning. It's a simple song entitled, I Am a Friend of God. How many of you truly believe God is a friend? Hallelujah. One, two. Listen. Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you need me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me?
is a soul sincere desire, a nutter dark express. Prayer is a hidden motion of a fire that trembles within a breath. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, thou who art eternal, thou who begins when there was nothing and thou who ends when all things have concluded. We come this morning before you honoring your holy and divine name, bestowing your majesty, realizing that you are all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, everywhere present. God, we ask today that you would allow us to enter into your gates with thanksgiving. You would allow us to enter into your courts with praise. And because we love you and you love us, let us this day glorify and magnify your holy name. And God, please forgive us of our transgressions, those things we've done by omission and commission. God, please station our sins in the sea of forgetfulness as far as the sea is as far as the east is from the west. God, we ask that you would remember our sins no more. And God, we ask this morning that you would make our nation whole, whole from our strives of divisiveness, whole from our sense of meanness, whole from our sense of separateness, Bring us back together, God, under the banner of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bring us back together, God, that we might be able to walk together and sing together and not get weary. And God, on this third Sunday of Advent, allow the love of Christ to penetrate each of our hearts that we might be concerned about each other. And God, we pray this morning that you would give a blessing on your word that you will send for your people. We pray this morning that you will allow us to hear from heaven. We pray this morning that you will also heal the sick among us and quiet those who are discomforted. You will provide for us comfort in the midst of our trials and tribulation. And God, we pray this morning that when these times are over, when there will be no longer our footsteps in the sands of time, we ask that you would give us a resting place 
in your paradise called heaven. This we ask in the name of the infant Jesus who came to be our Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost that helped him be raised from the grave and by God the Creator who is our beginning and our ending. In your name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke chapter number three, beginning at verse number 15. And the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts regarding John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am unworthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. His windowing fork is in his hand to clear the thresh floor and to gather the wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing of his word and the doing of his holy will.
church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say thank you Jesus for he is marvelous and wonderful to be praised. And the joy the Lord gives, the world did not give it and so the world cannot take it away. I greet you on this third Sunday in the season of Advent. And I want to share with you that there is a word from the Lord. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 3, verse number 15. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. Let us pray. Gracious God, let your servant be an instrument of your grace and your people be blessed. Let the words and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We have been pursuing during this Advent season the general theme, great expectation. And the first Sunday we talked about the hope of his coming. Last Sunday we talked about preparation for his coming. And today we want to talk about love of his coming. We base this on that epic novel by Charles Dickens, Great Expectation. And in that novel, the pivotal character Pip finds himself in love with a woman that does not love him. He continues to pursue him, pursue her, until the Lord leads him to another. And it is there he finds his consolation and finds his expectations met by God. And so in the Christmas season, we come and we come with expectations and we come looking for wonderful things. And some of us love Christmas for many reasons. First of all, some of us think it, it's an extraordinary time. It's extraordinary experiences. It's extraordinary feelings. And yes, it is. Some of us love the food, the angel food cake the red velvet cake, and yes, even the fruit cake. We love the fellowship, the camaraderie with our friends and family. We love the sense of being together, even in the midst of this COVID-19 virus season. We still love it, and therefore we're going to try to get together any way we can, safely, 
and healthily. And some of us love the family time. We love the family time so much that we even dress ourselves almost alike in coordinated pajamas and we look all similar together so that when you take a picture, you're taking a picture of all of us together at one time. But I want to show you what I love about the Christmas season. I love the gift sharing. No, I don't necessarily love the gift receiving part of it, but I love the gift giving part of it. It is exciting to me to pick a gift out, fitly designed for a person, and to watch the excitement on their faces as they unwrap that present and are able to see something they did not expect and the thrill and the joy that comes over them, that is exciting. And I love that about Christmas. I love the gift giving part more than the gift receiving. Perhaps that is the way it is with God. God loves us so much that he gave us the ultimate gift. And so that gift provides for us love, love that invokes in us a desire to repent. You remember John the baptizer is the one who then preaches this sermon in verse 7 and, and says to them about repentance. And then he comes to them and says, you brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath to come? Who told you? that there is danger around the corner. Who warned you that you need to change your ways? You need to be convinced, you need to be converted, and you need to be convicted. Who told you you need all to do all of that? And in response, three groups come to him. First group comes to him is the crowd. The crowd says to him, what shall we do? He says to them, share what you have. Share, if you have two coats, share one coat with another. In other words, be a gift giver. Share your gifts with others. The second group are the tax collectors, one of the most hated groups in the time of Jesus. And they come and they say, what shall we do? And he says to them, collect no more than you authorize or prescribe to receive. Don't burden the people with tax collecting. Don't add to it. Don't add a surcharge to what you're supposed to get, but ask for what you are to get and receive it and do not burden the people. Therefore, be a burden bearer. And the third group were the soldiers, the Roman soldiers and the temple guard. They both were very much disliked by the people because they were burdensome to them. They say, what shall we do? And he says to them, do not extort from anyone by threat or by false accusation. Do not try to compel people to share what they do not have. Therefore, be a burden reliever. It is in this context that God will call us through love to repentance. Love provides for us a sense of, of, of empathy and compassion that makes us see ourselves as we are. People in need of repentance, people in need of change, people in need of going a different way. Therefore, love invokes in us during this season, if we really see God for who he is, if we really see the Christ child, a sense of repentance. We want to repent. And therefore, we come, what, ask, what, what shall we do? We should pray more. We should praise more. And we should practice the love of God more among the people. Secondly, love provokes a concern for the Messiah. Who is this one to come, the anointed one? Who is this one whom we have long waited for? Who is this one that will be our deliverer? Who is this one that will take the, the, the burden off our backs? Who will take 
the knee off of our neck. Who is this one that will help us? He is none other than the Messiah, the anointed of God. After 400 years of not hearing from God by a prophet, from Micah to John the Baptist, after almost 900 years of not hearing a seeing a king like David and Solomon on the throne of Israel, we need a deliverer. After a Babylonian captivity and a Assyrian captivity, after being in bondage for things we've done, we need someone to come and save us. And we are looking for a Messiah wherever we can find him. But I want to tell you, we need not look any further than the Son of God. And so John the baptizer is right to point not to himself. It is not his message that saves, but Jesus. It is not his declaration that saves, but Christ. It is not his ministry that lifts, but it is the blood and the body of the living Christ that lifts us up out of the muck and miry clay. How did the hymn writer put it? He said it was love that lifted us when we were sinking deep in sin, far off from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard our despairing cry. From the waters lifted us, now say, am I. It was love, the love of God, the love of Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost that moved on the altars of our souls and lifted us out of danger and out of harm. It is therefore our responsibility not to point to ourselves, for we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the ecstasy of the power may be of God. And so therefore we must point to Christ. We must point to God. We must point to Jesus. As John the baptizer said, I point you to the one who shall follow me. For of his shoes I am unable to latch. And I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with power. He will baptize you with the living fire. And so therefore, I want to encourage all of us in these latter days to point not to ourselves, but to point to the living Christ, who is the answer for the world today. And finally, Love produces reconciliation and restoration. What do you mean, Pastor? People are proclaiming the good news, the Bible says, about Jesus the Christ. They are declaring that the Messiah is near. And when the Messiah is near, we can't help but to make a declaration. Just like the trees, when the warmth of summer and spring come, they can't help but to unfold their buds and to bring, bring forth leaves. And so when he shall appear, strange things will happen in us. Hands that won't clap will clap. Feet that won't dance will dance. A mind that won't praise will praise. A heart that won't sing will sing. A voice that was been shut up in a stutter will now break forth in, in beautiful melodic language. We can now share the will of God because the kingdom of God is near and at hand. The Messiah has come. I want to remind you what love can do. Love not only can lift you out of the muck and miry clay. Love not only will climb up on a cross for you and I. Love not only will go to a three-day grave. Love not only will climb up out of that grave. But love can come. Because the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Love can give you everlasting life. Love can give you faith. Love can give you peace. Love can give you hope. Love can make you prepared and ready to when Jesus comes to be ready to go home with him. Love can lift. Love can give hope. 
Love can straighten out. Love can lift up. Love! In his name we pray. Amen. My sisters and brothers today, if love has converted your soul, if love has convicted your heart, and if love has convinced your mind that Jesus is the answer for you, we invite you to give your life to Christ today. All you need to do is to put your name and your telephone number in the chat line and we will contact you. If you need to recommit your life to Christ, today is a good day. All you need to do is to put your name and your telephone number in the chat line. And if you've been looking around for a church home, you've been looking high and you've been looking low. You've been looking left and you've been looking right. I declare you found the place just for you. St. Luke is a mighty good one. Why don't you put your name and your telephone number in the chat line? And we will contact you and lead you through the steps of being converted, of recommitment, of becoming a member of St. Luke AME Church. Let us now share our gifts with the Lord through the ministry of giving. There are at least three ways you may give this morning. You may give by Givelify, Cash App, or Mail-In. To give by Givelify, you may click on the link that is in the digital bulletin you received, and it will take you directly to the app, or you may download the app from your favorite app store and then make a gift to St. Luke. You may also give by going to Cash App by using our Cash App ID, which is dollar sign S-L-A-M-E-C Source, dollar sign S-L-A-M-E-C Source, and share your gift. Or you may give by mailing your gift in to St. Luke, AME Church, 521 West Avenue E, Garland, Texas, 75040. St. Luke, AME Church, 521 West Avenue E, Garland, Texas, 75040. We look forward to receiving your gifts. We look forward to you being blessed by the Lord, for it is more blessed to give than to receive. And now let us go forth as we prepare to serve God, receive the benediction. Now may the love of God, the peace of Jesus of Nazareth, and the communion of the Holy Ghost go with you henceforth and forevermore, and all of God's people said, Amen.